This conference will now be recorded. All right, looks like we got everybody here so we can get started. Um, so remember, everybody will be here at 5.30 for interviews. And uh, bring your list of questions that you want to ask. We have the standard that we always ask. We'll go through those. And everybody is going to ask two questions. So how about, I would say, four that you would like to make sure they get asked because, like, like say that I want to ask, why do you want to be a counselor? And Mr. Irvin wants to ask that. I don't care who asks it as long as that question gets asked. So let's, you know, so we're not wasting a lot of time with picking what we want. We just pick our two questions and then we get through it. So if any of you have questions you've received, please get them to us this morning, right after this meeting. Um, you can email to Trudy or I, and then we will compile them in a list and get those out to you Monday afternoon late, probably somewhere around four or something. That way we can also merge things. So if four questions are, tell us about yourself, we can put it into one and you don't have to go through so many questions um, and we'll get you the full list. We will separate out the list so that we'll have the old questions that we usually ask at the top and then any of the new questions will be separated out on the bottom so that you'll know the difference between the two and they'll all be numbered sequentially so you can say i want question number 12 and number 38 or whatever so that they make it easy to go through that process too mr fleck i i don't think i received our standard list unless that was in the envelope i don't remember but it's not in the one that's online so you haven't, it's, you haven't received it yet it hasn't been sent out oh, okay um so i'm hoping we'll have a chance to look at all of those before the meeting okay. yeah that's why we'll we'll send that out earlier you know about four or three somewhere in the afternoon so you can have a chance to look at it before the meeting i've, I've actually and, got meetings all day long the earlier the better yeah okay so and we would suggest since we do have six um the earlier you can get here before 5 30 um, the better too. Um, that way we're ready to go as close to 5.30 as we can with the interviews. We can go and if we have to, the council meeting is supposed to start at 7, but it can start after 7. We just can't start it before 7. So if we go late in the interviews, we'll just tell people, hey, the council meeting will be starting at 7 and, or after these are done. So. Okay. Ms. Soulsby. Quick question. Um, I haven't been part of the appointment process before for a counselor. So is this normally a public meeting? Everything okay. you, you do as a group is a public meeting, okay. except for executive sessions. Yeah. All right. Um, I am concerned about fairness to every candidate. And if other candidates that come after, if they can watch the, and so I am going to put it out just my opinion that I think it would be good to have them, the candidates themselves, maybe come to the council and be separated. And I don't know if maybe you're planning to do this already, but um, just so they can't watch the other candidates. I don't know. It's just a thought. Yeah. And there's nothing saying they can't. But it's kind of a courtesy thing that, hey, you know, please, please come on at your time. Uh, we do have a couple of them that have said they're coming to the council chambers. So they're gonna wait out in the foyer ahead of time um, and and then come in. So we can do that both ways. And so we'll have it set up so that we can actually have them sitting. We'll sit them down at the table down there um, where I usually sit and we'll adjust the camera so everybody will be in the picture, the two counselors that are typically in the room and the candidate, and then they'll be able to see everybody else on the screen. Um, we will be muting everyone except for council members and the candidate, so no one will be able to interrupt or speak, but anybody can come in and, and be a part of it. So, But that's a, a courtesy thing that we can ask, and then if somebody does come in, you can just note that, yeah, somebody came in and listened to everybody else's questions, um, and it's just for something for you to consider. Yeah. All right. Any more questions on that? So that will be our first thing that we do on business of the city council is appoint a person for ward one. 
And then we will go to item B, which is appointment of the municipal George, the municipal court judge pro tem. And so is Mr. Fisher going to be here? He will not. So I'll be here. And basically what he's doing, this is just appointing an additional pro tem. Um, his current pro tem wasn't available in January when he needed one um, or it was hard to get a hold of. So he just would like to have a, another one available and um, under the the city charter, the council would appoint those based on the judge making that recommendation. So the pro tems work for him. He pays or does deals with the compensation with them and everything. We don't do anything with the pro tem other than approving the pro tems that he selects to work for him. Okay, Mr. Fleck. So not that I don't trust Judge Fisher, but don't we get more information about individuals that he wants to put forth on a normal basis um we have i think we have in the past um jesse has i the the last pro tem i think he gave us more information because we'd never seen her before as a as an attorney in the office or in the, the building uh, jesse has actually worked as the backup for um our city attorney our prosecuting attorney for a number of years um when um Wads Wood woodworth was doing it uh, john was was the was the prosecutor so he's very familiar with the court and everything already um and how it operates because he's been doing it in the past but he stopped for the last after john left he hasn't done it anymore so um and i don't know why yeah I don't know why the judge didn't put anything else on because I think he was familiar with him pretty good. So, so and if I could follow up, I mean, based on this memo, I don't know if this person's an attorney or not. I don't know. I mean, I, I just feel a little weird appointing somebody just based on the judge's, you know, request. We'll see if we can get. We'll see if we can get a resume from him or something then, and something for you. Um, but he is an attorney. He has worked in our court. He's got that experience. But we'll see if we can get some more information from the judge. Yeah. Mr. Irvin. Thank you. Do these uh, appointments or anybody that serves as a judge, is there like a, a public record or file if there's been any complaints lodged against them or is there anything be, beside a resume uh, that we could look at and where would we go to find that information? I would think you could go to the Oregon State Bar and look and see if there's any kind of bar complaints against them as an attorney. Sure. Um, yeah, I think that would be the extent of nothing internally. So if they've served at the city before, there's no internal no. performance yeah. records. Or... No, because he's not been a, an employee of the city. He's just been a contract with John because John was a contract with us and he was just doing it as a, a fill-in for the prosecuting attorney. We haven't had any issues with Jesse at all. We're familiar with him. He's worked well with staff and with court staff and um, is familiar and has served well as a backup prosecutor. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay, item C will be the Chamber of Commerce report. Mr. Myers? Um, the Chamber of Commerce CEO, I think that's the title for, for Shauna now, um, will be here on attendance on Monday night to give an annual report for the Chamber. It's been an interesting year for her in her first year as CEO. Um, so it'll be kind of a short report, I'm sure, too. <laughs> All right. Any questions on that? Okay, we got item D is the safe routes to school and Fillmore stormwater outfall project issue. Mr. Bradsby. Uh, good morning, sir. Um, if you've been by the site, you've seen that uh, the curbs or, or the new ADA ramps appear to be um, below the street grade. Um, and that was very concerning to me. Uh, contacted the design engineer and asked him questions about uh, why that happened and um, you know what what the resolutions were uh, provided pictures for you folks um, you know he he basically said that there was a, a four foot 
what they call a clear area. I I use the term landing again, but that's incorrect. But it's basically uh area where the wheelchair or people kind of get aligned with the handicap ramp and uh, to maneuver up the handicap ramp. Um, so asking him what the availability or solutions were for a smooth transition, he said outside of major reconstruction, uh, he would he would do the grade breaks and I'm Hopefully, be patient with me. I'm going to try to show you what I mean by grade breaks. Oops, I did it wrong. <laughs> uh, is it? No oh, camera. Where is it? There it is. Did it come up, guys? Sure. No, no. You want me to just go? You want me to go ahead and do it, Ron? I, I got it up here. Oh, there you go. Come on. Yeah. All right, let me try to get it bigger for everyone. There you go. So, oops. Let's see what, there you go. Um, so what we have here is I've drawn, a, again, it's an exaggerated scale. The horizontal scale is one inch equals five feet. The vertical scale is one inch equals uh, basically three inches or 0.25 feet. So what I've done is drawn the cross section of Taylor. If you are proceeding from the south and going across Taylor to the north, this is what your cross section looks like. And what I've done is that this this particular piece, this is the handicap ramp on the south side. It's at 1.1%. And then the street goes up like 4.8%. Eight eight nine percent for the next and then it kind of flattens out to the crown which is about the center line of the street and after the center line we start falling at uh, various degrees and we're like eight one eight point one percent and then the, here's that four foot landing or clear area i was talking about the state allows four percent and then we have two percent on our handicap wrap and so what i mean by grade bricks if you can see right here at the gutter we went from a negative 2% to a positive 4%. So we have a grade break of 6%. You have you have a grade break here of approximately 4.1. And I didn't get time to label these, but you have another one here of 5. And just as a side note, as a road designer, they tell you anytime you have a grade break of more than 5%, you usually do a design a vertical curve for vehicles. So the concern is, and what was recommended by the engineer to avoid cost, is to have these grade breaks in your road, and we blend back in. And I, that seems kind of abrupt to me as a pedestrian, especially if you know I, I'm not handicapped, but I'm just thinking of various people walking that. You know, that's kind of rough. So the other option available is to re reconstruct the intersection. I've asked Wildish to give me a ballpark figure and they gave me a number of $58,365.20. Um, to, to basically what we would do is regrade um, the intersection um, and a little bit outside the intersection on Taylor as well as South 8th Street to make this blend so you would not have this big hump and we would have a smoother, you know, kind of type of cross section here. You know, we may come, you know, straight line it or something else, but we take away this, you know, this breaks or stuff like that for a smoother transition. Um, staff is recommending that, that council authorize us to do that and again be a part of a change order, uh, we would guarantee that if cost above this was above the $58,000, we'd come back to city council for approval. Um, any questions? I gave a very short presentation there. Mr. Fleck? So I guess I'm, I'm, it seems like we're missing some information here. So what if I'm reading this correctly, 
we're is it legal now well it would it would be totally no no it because we are we to make it totally legal councilman fleck we'd have to provide from the handicap ramp on the south side to the handicap ramp to the north side we'd have to have two percent in the line of travel um as you can see the difference between here and here is 1.7 or excuse me 1.3 feet um so we're we're gonna make it i don't know if we can come into compliance per se but we're going to be a lot better and we're going to probably come into compliance when you go east and west um, across the intersection where we're having trouble is the north south crossings on both sides that we have this real rollover here or uh, arch uh, where a parabolic curve i guess is what they technically call it but we have this real hard transition right here um and so, uh go ahead yeah so i guess some of my questions would be then what how in the world would you meet this on a hillside um you know we have many streets that are on hillsides that are going to have a much greater degree angle. um and 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 i mean i'm not saying i'm opposed to this but i guess the other question i'm wondering is the other suggestion is that just to put asphalt to fill the lows and reduce those valleys well, no, we in, in in the proposal before you, we actually remove the asphalt, do a little regrading, try to get this hump out of the way, out of out of um, the center, and bring it down. Uh, just give a different street profile and transition. Um, it is to go back to your first question about the hillsides. Basically, what I understand of the ADA, we try to make it as best we can. And if we can't come into compliance, we have to put in the file a note basically saying we can't come into compliance for these reasons, or we chose it this way. You know, we're non compliant. Anyway, we go, but we try to make it better by doing, say, do the, the intersection improvement. Um, basically, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just found the word I'm looking for, grade breaks. So I don't have yes. any sort of picture of what a grade break is. What does that mean? What does it look like? What is the cost? I mean, I, I guess I'm a little concerned that, you know, I see staff's recommendation, but I'm not seeing any details about the other recommendation. In this. Well, the grade break is basically this drawing that I've I've showed. So if you, you know, in this particular case, we can go, you know, down 2% on the handicap ramp, and then we have this grade break of 6%. We're negative 2 to 4. So this area is considered a grade break. This is considered a grade break. This is considered a grade break, and all these different things. So this free clearance area that, that we have to do in front um, is 4%, and then we have to match in somehow match into 8.1%. You know, we've talked about grinding to make this a smoother transition. And then I got worried that we're not going to have enough asphalt and we have school buses driving on it that, is, that I'm just, you know, I'm just making things worse. So these grade breaks, if you think of it, you know, and as you as a hiker and a hunter, you know that when you go from you know, relatively flat ground, and then you have to climb the mountain. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. a great break. And so that's what, again, it's exaggerated, but I wanted to be able to show you what I meant by a great break. We have these areas that where the grade really changes uh, from from a negative two to a plus four. Then we got a plus four going to a plus 8.1. Um, over here we have a negative 1.1 to a 4.9 so these all these changes in grade is in the area or the points or the grade breaks where things change 
Okay, I, I, I guess I'm still not visualizing what it is that you, what we would do in that option or what it would cost. I, I get the concern about getting the asphalt then if we're, you know, servicing it, but I guess I just need a little more information. And the other uh, question would be, where is this 50 some thousand dollars coming out of? Um, most of it would come out of the road fund. Um, I guess, Councilman Fleck, the best way I can even visualize it by the pictures, if you would go s straight, if you follow the, the line, you know, they're paved, they'll be patching around the handicap ramp, the curve. But if you imagine this going across the crosswalk, these, what they would do is go out, you know, the, from the hand or the gutter, they would go out another uh, three and a half feet at 4%. And then somehow they've got to blend, you know, the existing road into that, that, thing and so they might grind or they might um you know and then then you got another say the wheelchair you've got to come up into uh or excuse me you would come up into the 8.1 percent and again they have to blend all this and so how do you blend it do you blend it with asphalt or are you gonna most likely you're gonna take asphalt away and then you've got to consider what you've done to your street structure, you've got to think about your rideability for people driving straight, the rideability of vehicle turning left, because you're going to have these different elevations. Um, and so I would picture, kind of use tunnel vision per se, that you've got to walk the handicap ramp straight, and then you're going to have these different things, but somehow you have to blend to the sides of option one you have to somehow have to blend you can't leave these abrupt edges per, per okay. se so you're I gonna it, Ron. i'm following you now i'm sorry i just wasn't no saying... no no that's fine and, and that's part of my you know i'm sorry thank you for asking the questions it's not thank you miss soulsby i have thank you mr mayor i have a question for ron as well um ron so what the um, city staff is proposing is that we spend 58,000 to improve, but it won't bring it up to um, code. And in your experience, what is the um, possibility of this coming back to us later and saying that we are not compliant and us having to bring back a crew to readjust? And um, my concern would be spending more money later. And I just wanted your input on that. Um, by, you know, like I said, this project with the grant is to make a lot of things ADA compliant for kids and pedestrians to walk um, basically from school to school. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, so we have done that now with the handicap ramps and, and the area like that, and we've done it up and down the street. Um, like I said before, I think we need to document, you know, what the existing condition is. We document what we've done and decided to do with council action. And then, you know, we, we basically put in the file that, hey, we've tried really hard to comply with this. We've complied with the sidewalks we've tried with everything like i said i think with um ada i think uh, as this picture shows i think we can meet better going this way or excuse me east and west i'm sorry up and down the streets um i think we will be compliant um as councilman fleck it's hard to come two percent when the road may be coming down at six percent um but Again, we, I think there's, there's some, we can justify what we've done and, you know, it's cost prohibitive from a whole street type of profile that, you know, for the best dollar, this is what we did. We did, we, we got it better, but we're not totally compliant. And I understand those exist, you know, as long as we document why we did what we did. 
um, that's considered, you know, good enough. Yeah, we it, the the rule isn't that you have to f flatten the globe to make ADA comply, um, because we've got topography here, and I just pulled up the picture of the actual site of Eighth and Taylor. Um, there's no way to comply completely with ADA, but we have to do as best we can and and try to get those grade breaks so that they're smoother a little bit and and make it a little more reasonable to get through there. But you can see the grade. It's hard to see the grade too on the road, but there is a substantial grade and and change on the road and the area just because Harrison's on a hill and you go down on eight and you go down on Taylor and you're going back up Taylor. So it's, it's a tough spot. You know, I, I guess, you know, I'd, I'd encourage counselors to, if they have a couple of minutes, just drive by and look at, at, uh, just look at it. The pictures probably don't do it justice. Um, but, you know, just consider, you know, yourself walking, um, Council of Soulsby, I, I hope that's good enough. That's what I understand. That's the experience, you know, what we've been told. You know, we've asked questions, like you said, we have hillsides, we've had this. How do you expect us to come into compliance? And basically, we we try to do the best we can to meet everything. And then if we can't, we, we say we can't do this because of blank and and you know, I think we make sound rational decisions, and and you know that. So if we get challenged, then we have that note to fall back on. Mr. Irvin, you had a question. Yeah, uh, two questions. What is this road in this intersection classified in in terms of the road study as in terms of condition? Um, and I guess a kind of a subsequent thought to that is where in the priority list of redoing that road would we have been had we not done this project with the sidewalks uh, and then the follow-up question is if we do the grade break solution um, is that covered under the current budget or would there be any additional expenditure uh, associated with that um there could be if we went with option one which is the grade break expenditure there are probably it would be most of it's under contract. We probably pay a little more in a bid item. Uh, for instance, they may have um, estimated, you know, four tons at a corner. Uh, now that we have to do something different, um, you know, we might have to remove a little bit, blend a little bit. Um, so uh, most of that is in a bid item, like patching and then asphalt removal. Um, so the first bid item we just do under bid items and the $58,000 they think we can do under bid items too, but, you know, we're talking a little more extensive work about removing the asphalt, regrading, uh, ensuring that we have a good base and so on and so forth. Um, back to your first question, Councilman Irvin, I don't have that information. I will get it to you. Um, as far as where the the rating of, of South 8th Street and Taylor are, um, as far as where they are in the priority list and stuff like that, I don't have that number, you know, as far as ranking and that kind of stuff. So I, I thank you for an answering the questions. I don't feel like I get, have a good understanding of what the, an estimate of the cost just apples to oranges, fifty-eight thousand to like two thousand, like three thousand you know, overage for additional grinding, possibly. And then the other question is, I'm, I'm sure there are other intersections that are identified as kind of slated to on the next uh, round of improvements uh, that are m much more degraded, and you know we could spend fifty-eight thousands on improving a different intersection potentially. Um, some of the thoughts behind that, so that, but order order of magnitude the grade break solution for maybe some blending some grinding down and to make that transition are we talking hundreds or many additional thousands for that sure i will see if i can get that answer to you by monday night any more questions mr stennett um 
so it seems like we're basically dealing with the crown in this street, if I see this correctly. Um, is is the crown caused? I remember um, w with regard to the Main Street refinement plan, the, the crown in Main Street was caused by basically repeated paving. Is that is that the case here? Was one question. Um, it could be could be Councilman Stennett. There's a little deeper asphalt there. Um, they either did it due to bus traffic um, for a heavier use, or they could have overlaid it. I, I think the other thing of the crown is, is if you look at the two sides of the street, you got one much higher than the other side. And so they had to come up with uh, a solution to match those two, two different elevations. Um, and so that has created a crown, you know, they've, you can have a straight grade or what they call a straight runoff where you see kind of a peak in the middle where the crown is, or you, this is probably more of a roll or a parabolic what they did, um, to, to match, you know, the two different elevations, uh, having the north side being lower and stuff. So it, um, that's probably I would guess the topography caused more of the crown issue than maybe the overlay issue. Okay. I was also wondering, you, you've said a, a couple times how awkward it would be for pedestrians, um, but it seems like when we're, when we're working with handicap ramps and, and the like it, that we're, mo we're kind of targeting uh, wheeled conveyances, uh, wheelchairs, um, strollers, et cetera. It's, it seems from, from that perspective that it would be really intense to go you know, from a 2% downgrade to an 8% upgrade in your, in your wheelchair and, you know, just to get you back in the middle of the street and then to, to have another downgrade again, it seems, it seems pretty intense. And, and yeah, kind of it, it, I, I, I guess I don't want to limit our conversation to, to wheelchairs, but that's definitely a concern. Uh, you know, that's the one you think about, you know, as you walk or in your case, sir, you run, um, you know, when, when you, change from a downgrade and go to the upgrade you know how push do you transition too, so, yeah. <laughs> how do you does your dog pull you up the hill or how do you make that transition type of thing is so I, I that's all i'm asking you know as we as people walking or you know we got a cane or you know our various forms of handicap how do we transition from those those sudden you know bumps in the road um type of thing and so um but wheelchair is is a very good you know instance um for this and that you know that is definitely a concern and the other concern i had somebody an elderly maybe with a cane you know you come down and you get put your cane down in the wrong spot and next thing you know you could be on the ground so that's a very good point sir any more questions okay. All right, thank you, Ron. Mm, thank you, sir. Concerns from councils, any need brought up today? Mr. Flack. I uh, just wanted to mention for staff and the public, looks like I'm probably gonna put us on standby for Sunday uh, for the warming shelter. Um, looks like uh, at least one report is saying 29 degrees for um, Sunday. So just wanted to give a heads up to everybody that um, we may be activating. You know, I just want to remind everybody tonight is the ELCOG Awards Banquet. Um, was it five o'clock? Seven. Seven, seven, seven o'clock tonight. And so if you could go on there, uh, Mr. Myers is going to receive the award for Outstanding Public Employee. So please go on and, and if you're not registered, get with Trudy today and get registered. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, moving on to Business from the city manager, presentation of the Pegasus Esquiarn project. Mr. Myers. So we'll have some representatives join us from the Pegasus Esqu Es Horse project. <laughs> Equestrian, there we go. Equestrian um, resort and venue. It's going to be built down near, or they're planning on doing some work down uh, by the Metz Hill exit. It's about a 3,000 acre parcel. It's outside the city, about 30 miles south of us, but it will have some impact if they are successful in developing and, um, the venue and putting that together. So um, it, 
it will have that potential to be there. Um, and so they're going to come and kind of talk about what, what it means to Cottage Grove, um, what their project is. They are applying to Douglas County for a land use permit to do that. And that application is going in shortly. And it's, I think the hearing is on the 15th. They may ask the council for um, consideration to uh, as a letter of support or something in their application process. Um, so that's something that you may just want to be aware of. Um, we don't have to, It's and it wouldn't be a conflict because we're not in Douglas County, but um, it could have some direct impact on our tourism and hotel and restaurant facilities here in Cottage Grove with the number of people that may be coming to the venue as a result of, of their project. So just that's the presentation they'll be giving, um, so it should be interesting. Mr. Irvin? Yeah, it was a long application to read uh, and quite informative, but one of the thoughts was the Cottage Grove Airport and its uh, relevance, uh, since a lot of these travelers do come in through through flights. And I, I guess Roseburg is 15 miles away, but we're, what, 23 by, by air, um, air travel. So I guess it brought up the question, what is the capacity of, of our airport um, and can we look at if this thing does come to fruition, uh, trying to be the destination spot for flights in, uh, if there's any anything, and maybe just the people that run the airport uh, could be part of this uh, to hear this or be brought in. Yeah, the um, it's a state-run airport, so it runs out of the Department of Aviation in the state. Um, it is large enough to handle the private jets. Um, it can't handle the commercial, but it'll handle some of the private jets. It's a pretty decent airport and runway. Um, when I visited with the, one of the um, principals with the um, project, we talked about our airport, our airport, and I gave him the details, and he looked it up on the state page. Um, and they're quite excited that that's a venue that will be and a resource that will be much better for them to use than Eugene, just because it's not as busy, but it has the length and the, the weight load that they would need for some of those private planes that would be coming in. So it's definitely one of those areas. Um, and I think we've made the kind of drop the, the information to the aviation department. We're also working with them on another project at the aviation department as well, um, uh, economic development and a business that may be coming in and being out at the airport. So um, we've been in touch a little bit there. So yeah. And they questions? will have their own field as well. They have their own airfield in the project too, just a smaller one. Yeah. Any more questions? Seeing none, we will go to item B, the land exchange, South 7th and Fillmore, Mr. Bradsby. Oh, I muted him. Oh, um, Resurrection Life Church um, came in about the time we were purchasing right away for the Safe for Us the School project. He knows that uh, that part of the church's property uh, would be uh, city right away, and uh, under the current conditions, part of the sidewalk area on the corner there is within that private property and exhibit a the it would be the extent if we you know straight line the existing right of ways <coughs> excuse me and the red hatched areas um mr tuttle is like I said is is working was working with a, a neighbor to the south to uh divide off a piece of their parcel and he thought it may be it you know would behoove everyone if we did it all at once um he's hired a surveyor um, and since then, he the surveyors come in representing Mr. Tuttle and asked if we would like, if we would be open to a curved right of way, which is shown in Exhibit B, uh, versus the the rectangle uh, shape in Exhibit A. Um, basically, I told the surveyor I would was open to a curved right of way as long as we could get all the city infrastructure and the existing streetlight pole onto what would be finalized city right away. Um, so before we, we proceed any farther, I guess I need council to approve a concept 
what they would prefer to have, either, you know, basically the rectangle uh, in Exhibit A or the curved right-of-way that kind of follows the road in Exhibit B. Um, I laid out what, if we go with Exhibit B, which staff is recommending, um, the church needs to give the city two pieces and we need to vacate, which would come back before the council for a vacation process and then turn that over to the church um, to to make it even. Um, so again, the staff is recommending the curved uh, right away uh, and that was shown in exhibit B uh, any questions mr. Fleck so I guess Ron I'm I'm curious what's driving this are they looking to develop that other tax lot um I think so they're they're looking at doing something they they sold off uh, this a chunk of the south portion of that that parcel um, they've kind of looked at different things. I was kind of surprised too that they they came back with a suggestion since most of that is you know a rock retaining wall and stuff like that. But um, I guess the different members of the church kind of looked at it and say you know why can't we just follow the shape of the road versus having it square? So I I'm thinking that they and and. Faye may have a different answer. I know he's had conversations with Mr. Tuttle, but I think they, they're probably going to look at developing, you know, the parcel. So, and, and I guess the next question would be, if they are going to develop it, can they put a drive on a corner like that? I mean, what, what actually would be more beneficial to the development of that site? <sighs> Uh, because it's a hill, Councilman Fleck, I don't think they will come straight, like you said, into the lot. And as I believe Richard is showing with the mouse, there is an existing driveway approach right there. And so I would guess they're going to use that access to come back into the lot and up onto that plateau or the hill there. Okay. Mr. Irvin? you give a little bit of information on just the what is a right away and what what rights are you know what is a right away and why is it important well right away is is basically where you know the the city has land to you know develop for um you know its purposes in in this case we have uh, normally, right away, you include uh, our underground utilities, um, the sidewalks, and, and a road surface. And in this case, because of the the way the land got divided, we have sidewalk that's really on private property. And I don't think there was any easement obtained from the church to do that. So. Uh, so typically, you, you see those items within the city right away. So it's just land that that's under city management. You know, and we usually put you know your transportation system, um, your water, your sewer, your storm drain, and various infrastructures. And usually, the underground utilities are within you know your public right away if there is an easement um, to provide those services for your residents in the area. So, like in the safe routes to school situation, uh, when when had, the city had to go and do a bunch of little land purchases, essentially, what what we have right now, uh, if if that was going to take place on this block, uh, the city would have to try and purchase that corner to do Correct. something, with, redo the sidewalks. Sure. Whereas the proposal, it would it would eliminate that and it would just be a swap, so um, the city could redo those sidewalks at will. Yeah, and we did some of the sidewalks with the Safe Routes to School. We we improved, if you remember, the storm drain clear down to to the intersection here with a 27 inch line. So we we did part of them. But you are correct. You know, if we wanted to correct this, we'd have to purchase it or come up with again the idea of a land swap, um, very similar to what we did on South Lane. 
or excuse me, Safe Routes to School, you know, with with the improvements or the redesign with handicap ramps and stuff and getting a sidewalk in, we've had to adjust, as you said, you know, we purchased right away so we can get all those those type of improvements in. Ms. Soulsby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So both the city and the church believe that plan B is the optimal plan, correct? Um, I guess we're we're agreeing with the church. You know, they've met by what I've shown, they have met the conditions um or that's their intent. Um I've talked with the surveyor several times and he suggested we walk out in the field and kinda make sure that we meet the intent of everything on the city right away. Um Optimum, I don't know. I, I feel we've correct either either option is gonna correct the issue, Councilman Solsby or Councilwoman, excuse me. Um but but you know, I guess I we said okay if there's no problem if with it being curved versus you know, I don't know what the city would do with the extra land if we made it a rectangle. We took the red area, you know, we'd have part of the hillside and you know, now we, now we may not have it and don't have to worry about the retaining wall. So or maintenance uh, or upkeep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any, any other questions? Okay. Um, report from the city manager. Is there anything you want to add before we adjourn this? Report? Yeah, just a couple of items. And I made a note. Um, and I need to get to my notes on there. Um, We'll email you Monday afternoon, like we said. Uh, just wanted to report on the assistance of the city manager position. We've narrowed it down to three candidates, and we will be doing those interviews next Wednesday. Um, so we have an interview panel that will be ironing that out and working on that. Um, when we did the narrowing down from the nine, we had 10, but one dropped out, talked to his family, and decided they didn't want to move. Um, and so we had nine. Um, we submitted those nine to a panel of department heads and a person from outside the city as well, very versed in local government and, and city management, a former city manager of Albany, Legrand, and um, uh, Oak Ridge even, and he's done stuff internationally as well, so um, very knowledgeable. And we took off all the names and addresses and information so nobody knew who anybody was of the nine and evaluated those. And then from there, we got the three and we will be interviewing them on Wednesday. And so hopefully late next week, we will have a selection of who the assistant city manager would, assistant to the city manager would be. So that's exciting. Um, and then I wanted to point out that we received, we've received several thank yous, but this I think is the first thank you card we've actually received from one of the businesses downtown. Um, Axe and Fiddle has sent us a thank you for the work in putting up and helping them with the canopy and getting that squared away so that they could do some business outside and, and continue to operate um, under the restrictions and or continue to operate at a level that is profitable or, or helpful for them to be able to maintain their business. So I um, just wanted to let you know that we got that. That's it. All right. Is there anything else for the good of the order before we adjourn? All right, well, I appreciate everybody coming in for uh, or doing these agenda sessions. I think they make our meetings more efficient when we can get questions answered Friday rather than trying to do them on the fly Monday night. So appreciate all the hard work you guys are putting in. Thanks. And, and please just, get your questions. If you have any other questions that you receive, get them into us um, here in the next little while so we can start putting that list together for Monday afternoon. Great. Have a good weekend. Bye. Thank you.